he is frustrated because he cares about the small people and we care about the small people. I hear comments sometimes that large oil companies are, are greedy companies or don't care, but that is not the case in BP. We care about the small people. I think that maybe the cultural differences might have gotten in the way there a little bit, but you get the point from the chairman of BP, who's trying to put out the message that they care about the people on the Gulf who have been hurt emotionally, financially, because of the greatest oil spill in history. Doug Brinkley is a presidential historian, professor at Rice University, best-selling author who is in uh, Austin, Texas, but lived and worked, as I said a little earlier, uh, in New Orleans. So much has happened, Doug, over just the last 12 hours or so. Oval Office address, the first for the president last night, this meeting. Then he comes out, he speaks again, the BP folks come out. What do you make of everything that's happened over the last day? Well, I think this has been the first bit of slightly good news since the um, Deepwater Horizon incident, meaning $20 billion is a lot of money. BP is putting it on the table. And finally, there's going to be some hope for the people in the Gulf South from Pensacola to Grand Isle and every place in between. Uh, President Obama and the administration was working on this last week. They had the structure of the deal in place. There was some pushback on BP of the amount, whether it's 15, 10, 15, or 20 billion. The Obama administration got its 20 billion mark and it allows the president to let the send a very clear message both to BP that you guys have been a bad corporate friend in the United States that this was not the um, oil spill just a drop in the bucket as Tony Hayward once said because companies don't pay 20 billion when they don't have to BP did this for survival because once they were they had this that small people comment you just made there there have been these kind of call them cultural misunderstandings or just insults to people of Louisiana the people of Louisiana have heard and I think the media deserves some credit because they've been going after BP the journalism's been ferocious and, you know, if we just beam ourselves back 50 days, nobody sh was sure whether it was Transocean guilty or Cameron or Halliburton. BP has had, had egregious um, uh, safety um, um, flaws on that rig. The documentation showing it, and BP did this out of desperation. It was the best move the company could have made, and it gets Obama a platform of, of credibility now to go forward in the Gulf Coast with the recovery, which is going to include rebuilding the wetlands where the oil's getting in and cleaning up the beaches where the tar balls and, and uh, et cetera. And, and we can't even get to the marine life issue yet but it's going to be devastating on uh, the 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 death zone in the um, in the Gulf from the chemical dispersants and the oil let me ask you from a, a historian's perspective about the change that we've seen in President Obama from the beginning of this uh, uh, certainly over the last couple of days well, he heard the American people. Um, the American people will, went after BP, and Ken Salazar, it looks like, correctly said the administration is going to, you know, go. At, we're, we've got our hands around the throat of BP. It's taken a lot of lawyering. It's taken a lot of time. It's looking at uh, how this gets paid out, setting up a, a distribution entity. It's a lot of work. But in the end, the administration has shown by getting this $20 billion from BP that they are listening to the people in the Gulf South, whether they've listened enough or fast enough is a different story but this is a significant moment in this and it shows BP as being culpable for the worst environmental disaster in American history Doug Brinkley thanks for sitting around I know you were there for a while listening to the press briefing it's always good to get your perspective good to see you yeah. nice to see you thanks and that's our show for Wednesday I'm Chris Jansing Dylan Radigan is up next he'll talk with the former president of Shell's US op